Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Founders Great, sponsored by Gaper.io. Today, we have Red. Red is the co-founder of Courageous Leadership and also a best-selling author from Marshall Goldsmith 100 Course, MG100. Red, welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Thank you. So, you know, trying to make the conversation much more relevant towards today's time and deep diving into, can you share your experience in more in regards to MG100 and if 100 coaches, if you can elaborate more on that, please? Well, absolutely. I'm happy to do that. Uh, you know, the, the, the MG100, the Marshall Goldsmith 100 coaches was a program that Marshall started, I think, four years ago now. And the whole intent was for him to share everything that he knew with, uh, started with 15 coaches and then it grew to 100. Um, but he wanted to share everything that he knew and everything that he had learned along the way with his mentors. Um, and, and so he, he adopted us sort of as, as, as uh, kids, I guess, that, that you would adopt a kid. Um, but he adopted uh, 100 coaches to help share his knowledge and his, his wealth in coaching, his you know, wealth of knowledge in coaching. And, and what I'll say is, is that what is really developed out of that is a group of people who uh, want to change the world, who want to change coaching, who want to make business better, make people better. And it has been life-changing to me to be around that group of people. Because, you know, as a coach, uh, as a leader, as, as somebody that's been in a CEO role before and now is a coach, it, it's lonely out there sometimes. Sure. And it's lonely at the top. And, it's, and, and we all need someone to talk to. We all need to find our tribe. We all need to find you know, a group of people that we identify with and can learn from and who make us better, who challenge us. And that's what that group does. I, I mean, that group challenges me every day to be the best uh, person I can be, the best coach that I can be. I learn from them every single day. I'm talking to two colleagues today in the MG100, and I know what I know is I'm going to learn something. And, and so it's a group that has been just such a positive influence on me, a positive influence in my business. And, uh, and if you get a chance to work with one of the MG100 coaches, no matter where you are in the world, because they're all over the world, uh, do it because that person, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm 100% certain can help you be a better leader, be a better uh, owner of a business, better CEO, whatever it is you do. So if you get a chance to work with one of, one of my colleagues in MG100, do it because it, it'll be a unique opportunity to learn and, and, and then actually then be connected to that same network and get those same opportunities. Okay. And would you like to elaborate more on what you're doing at Courageous Leadership, please? Absolutely happy to do that. Um, Courageous Leadership was kind of born out of the pandemic. Okay. And, but it was born out of years and years and years and working with hundreds of clients and realizing that one of the fundamental things that we don't often talk about enough is courage. And I've begun to, my partners and I have sort of begun to realize that courage is a prerequisite, a prerequisite for any kind of change, whether it's, you know, working on your diversity and inclusion in your business, whether it's making those tough personnel decisions, whether it's transformation of some sort, a merger, whatever it is you're trying to do, it requires courage. It, change requires courage. And so we began to sort of, we, 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 after interview after interview and talking to a lot of leaders, hundreds of leaders, you know, we, we formed courageous leadership. We merged our coaching practices. We merged our businesses, our consulting practices to form courageous leadership because we wanted to take courage head on. We wanted to help leaders become the best version of themselves. We wanted to help them then help their organizations become courageous organizations. And we look at courage as sort of that central uh, courage system. Instead of the central nervous system, we look at it as sort of the central courage system, because if you can put courage into your decision making, then and into everything that you do, into your culture, if you can in, insert it into your culture and, and make it stick, then you can do anything. And we look at courage in three, the three pillars of courage, three, th three things that you have to have. Number one, 
the no, no, it, it comes down to knowledge, faith, and action. Knowledge being you got to have the information to make decisions, right? Once you have those that knowledge, it takes the faith. And that what I mean by faith is not what, what you probably think. Faith means you got to have that believership within the organization, right? The people in your organization have to believe in you. They have to believe in the management team. They have to believe in themselves and they have to believe in the product and the service and they have to believe in the company. So it's your job as a leader to create that believership. So that's faith. And then if you have the knowledge and the faith, then the next step is action. And, and if you can, if you put all those things together and everybody knows what I mean by action, it's, it's, it's taking that plan that you have, that knowledge that you have and make it a decision and going with it. So if you can put those three elements together, what we've seen is that organizations just can transform themselves. Interesting. Sorry, my mic was on mute. So, okay. That was a very insightful thought you've given. I just kind of like got lost in that. But okay. So, uh, and how has it been, you know, starting something in the middle of the pandemic and especially, uh, and how has the response been like, you know, because uh, I, I look after sales in my company and I get my energy from the people, you know, pre-COVID for me, it used to be every two weeks yeah. on a plane, every two weeks on a plane. But now, you know, COVID has made me realize uh, I need to do everything over Zoom. So some days are like, you know, I'm able to, I walk into a room, I bring a lot of energy with me, but sometimes I'm able to transfer that through Zoom. Sometimes I'm unable to do that. So how are you able to do that, you know, the team spirit and the coaching spirit over Zoom and how's the experience been so far? Well, it's been the best year in my coaching practice ever. So wow. this year it has been absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, and, 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 and I'll tell you that, you know, you look, I look, you know, you, I go back to, to say February, March of last year and you're looking at what's happening and, and there's so much uncertainty. And, and I, I kind of felt at the time that, you know, wow, this is going to be awful this year. And the first thing that people are going to cut is the coaching, right? First thing that people are going to cut is the consulting. True. And it's been, it's been the complete opposite because I think what people realized was they needed that support. I think leaders realized they needed somebody to talk to, to get through what they were facing and the uncertainty that they were facing to also have somebody to talk to about what to do next, you know, how to, how to talk to people. I mean, I spent a lot of time this year on those, on those soft skills, on those, this is, you know, this is how you communicate this information. So, so it's been a great year in that sense. And, and, and people are responding to the conversation about courage because I think people are starting to realize that, that is so fundamental and it's the first step to any kind of change like, as I was talking about. So the courage conversation, interestingly enough, we had our one of our first Zoom, we're calling it our courageous boot camp, a courage boot camp. And we did that with a, a client, um, a fairly sizable client, 8,000 employees. Um, wow. Wow. And, and they and their whole leadership team, their whole senior leadership team. And the CEO said, last Friday, he said, that's the best thing that we've ever done. That's wow. the best exercise we've ever done with our, our whole leadership team. Um, and so, you know, we're working with some other Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies right now uh, to do the same program. And, and so the response has been really positive. And Zoom, you know, ideally we all wanna be in person and, and, and uh, wanna be out there talking to people. Uh, in person and shaking hands and, 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 you know, having that personal interaction, we're stuck with zoom. So we have to make the best of it. Sure. And so, you know, we have to do things creatively on zoom using breakout rooms, creatively using individual time, you know, creatively um, taking, letting people break off and do some individual work. Um, and then we have to really keep it moving and keep the conversation going and one of the things that we really realized in, the, in that last session was um, that people want to discuss and they want to talk and they want to share. And so putting a lot of time, give, allowing a lot of time in those presentations to have people share their thoughts and their opinions 
and actually calling on them and, and making them be part of the conversation is a great way to keep that interactive uh, part of it going. Because look, we're all, we all have Zoom fatigue. I, I, you know, there's no doubt about it. That's a new thing. I'm sure there's a new medical condition called Zoom fatigue. But, <laughs> yeah, I hear you, I hear you. But we have to, we have to keep it interactive and, and call on people and make sure that they're involved. True, true. So, which brings me to my next question. What three pieces of advice? I know you're a coach, but sorry, you know, I just want for the freebies out there, what three pieces of advice would you actually give to young entrepreneurs who just started out or started out in the middle of pandemic and got hit by multiple turbulent whirlwinds, you know? So what kind of advice would you give to those individuals? First time founders. You know, just realize that you're not alone, that, that everybody, you know, uh, in, a, in a lot of industries are getting hammered right now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely blessed. I, mean, I I've been in business. I'm, you know, you see a lot of the gray hair here. Um, you know, I, I'm extremely blessed to be, you know, to work with some of the top companies and, and, and CEOs and leaders in the world. And so, um, but I, but, you know, I was a startup entrepreneur, you know, 15 years ago, and this would have absolutely crushed us, right? I, I would not be here today if we'd have faced the same thing. You know, if COVID, COVID had come along when I started my toy company, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here today because it would have just crushed us. So I get it. I know exactly the anxiety you're feeling, what you're experiencing. And all I can say is, if this idea didn't work out, don't give up on your next. You know, go get that job, and at night, instead of watching two hours worth of TV, spend that time working on your new business or your new idea, or resurrecting the one that just failed. You know, um, never give up, never stop, and 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 just you know, entrepreneurship takes total commitment. It takes an all-in kind of uh, mentality and an attitude, and so just I would just keep that up. And, 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 and the other thing is keep your health up, keep your, your uh, uh, you know, keep eat right, get sleep, get your, you know, work on your body. And then the third thing is expand your network. Again, like I was talking about when you asked me about the MG100, that's, I, I can't tell people enough that if you, you know, spend 30 minutes a day or an hour a day on your network, reaching out to people that are important to your success, reaching out to old friends in your network or old colleagues that you used to work with, uh, seeing how they're doing. You never know where that next customer is going to come from. So be really deliberate about working on your network because that's going to that's gonna be, I know there are a lot of old sayings about your network, but I can't express that enough. The MG100, totally one of the reasons why I have, I've had the best year I've had. And, and so... Uh, work on that network and make that a real priority in your life. It doesn't mean social media. It doesn't mean getting on Instagram and face. It means actually reaching out to people that are important to your success. Sorry, which brings me to my last question. You know, what uh, personal changes have you brought into your life post pandemic that are helping you uh, to be much more productive and helping you with the mental health and all those kind of things, you know, what, or have you brought any changes or it's the same routine for you? <laughs> um, you know, luckily I've been working from home for a long time. I actually, I actually enjoy it. Um, uh, we went virtual a long time ago. Our team is spread out all over the world. And, and so for this, this wasn't a big work change. Uh, I think what, COVID has made me realize is, um, you know what? I don't know that I want to get back to the lifestyle of getting on a plane and going here for three days to talk or speak and then go on another plane and go somewhere else and then miss that time away from, you know, my, my, my kids. And uh, so I, I think I'll be a lot more selective in when I go somewhere or go someplace in the future. You know, I, I, I've always had this hustle mentality, right? We hear, oh, you got to go out there and you got to hustle. I think we can do it smarter now. I think we can do that in a different way now. Um, it, 
you know, there, there will still be some of that and we still want to go out and go to a conference or go to a, and do a talk, no doubt about it. But I think some of that, you know, I, I, I will certainly take some lessons I've learned uh, from that. And the other thing is the business, the businesses and the, and the conferences, you know, I think there's now going to be an online element to everything that we used to do. And so I think that's going to change some of the opportunities as well. I think the other thing is, is just appreciate the time that you have with people uh, and your loved ones and your family. And as you were talking about, you, we were talking about before we came on that uh, it just makes you realize that we're all human, that we're all in the, you know, very vulnerable and you, you, you just got to appreciate um, people and, and, and life that you have and, um, and, and make sure people know that you appreciate that. So I think that's just made it made that more aware in my mind and, and more, um, you know, reaching out to old, I talked about network. You know, I used to think, well, it's just your professional network, but it's also your personal network. You know, reaching out to friends and family and people that have been important to you in your life um, and, and just making a concerted effort to reach out to, to more people. I know um, that Zoom has made that, you know, really possible. And we've, we've, we're all again talking to, all kinds of people on Zoom now. So I, I think um, th that those are some of the lessons that I've learned. Uh, you know, most of my day-to-day -day stuff hasn't changed much, but I think the travel and the and the and the appreciation for what we have is has been real uh, something that made me has changed, I guess, for me. Great. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm pretty sure we could have talked for another 30 minutes or so, but my marketing team kind of like forces me to keep everything within 15 minutes thank you so much for being on the show take care of yourself and i would you know through this platform i would like to invite you so we do hold monthly webinars so i would like to invite you on one of those and you know it would be so it's kind of like uh, we have a uh, where I'm the moderator and we have three other guests. So it's kind of like an interesting conversation that we do once a month. So I'll definitely invite you to one of those. Uh, and, you know, it would be a good one. And thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.